And you can train strength daily on the same muscle. But if you want to allow for that process of connect uh, contractile proteins to, to add and grow, then you're going to have to allow some recovery. Because if you go back into that muscle too soon, you're going to blunt the response. You're going to stop it. You're going to cut it off. Me and my sister both want to get stronger. Yep. What modifiable variables should... Um... How okay. should we modify the variables? Love it. All right, great. Very first thing I'm going to go through is the, the exercise selection. So let's choose an exercise which ideally has a full range of motion or close to it that doesn't induce injury for you, that you can still maintain good neck and low back and, and position and everything else. Um, you feel comfortable with, so you can feel strong, but you don't feel like, oh my gosh, if you've never snatched before, having you do a snatch for a maximum, even you know, 75%, like it's a terrible idea. You're not going to feel confident. It's going to be a train wreck. I would rather put you on a machine bench press. So you can go, I feel stable, I feel safe here, and I can just express my strength. So exercise choice in generally, in general, full range of motion, and you wanna kind of balance between the movement areas. So this is an upper body press. So this is pushing away from you, bench press, things like that. Upper body pull, pulling an implement toward you, uh, bent row, pull up. Um, the pressing should be horizontal, so perpendicular to your body, as well as vertical. So this is lifting a weight over top of your head, lifting a weight away from you. The pull version is pulling horizontally to you and pulling vertically down, pull up, things like that. The importance, I like this idea of, of pushing um, uh, perpendicular to the body overhead, pulling both toward, uh, toward the body and from overhead. That just makes really good intuitive sense, especially since a lot of people were just listening to this and not watching it. So yeah, yeah. In, in your minds, folks, you can think about um, pushing away like a punch or overhead, um, like lifting something overhead and then pulling toward uh, your midline or toward your body rather, and then pulling yourself up like a pull up in a PE class for those. Yeah. Of so if you were going to do a single workout, you could choose four exercises and you could choose one of each, one press, upper body press, one upper body pull, one lower body hinge, one lower body press. And, and that would be like a decently well-rounded exercise. Um, that's your exercise selection. And if you're taking those through a full range of motion, you're at a pretty good spot, as close as you can. The next one is intensity. So if you want to develop strength, this comes back to one of my favorite scientists of all time, who happens to be a nerve guy, actually. But he basically outlined this idea that, okay, um, there is a certain recruitment threshold needed for neurons to fire. And we have muscle fibers in what we call fast twitch muscle fibers and slow twitch muscle fibers. And in general, you're going to activate the slow twitch ones first because they tend to be associated with low threshold motor neurons. Only way that you activate some of these higher threshold neurons is to demand the muscle to produce more force. And it's fairly specific to force, right? It's not something you can do over an endurance thing, right? Unless it gets really extreme and fatigue happens. Um, so in general, the only way to use these big chunks of your muscle which are incredibly important for aging, by the way. One of the major problems we have with aging developing or development of aging related issues with muscle is the fact that we lose fast switch fibers preferentially. And then we have major problems as we go down the line because we've lost a big chunk of our strength and size. So you wanna make sure these fibers stay alive and intact. Okay, so if that being said, the only way to develop strength is then to challenge the muscle to produce more total force. So because the intensity demand is so high, that is going to force you to do a low repetition range. You can't do 12 reps at 95%. That, then it wouldn't be 95% of your one rep max. So by definition, true strength training is really going to be in like five repetitions per set or less range. That's where most of it's going to occur for specificity. So we've covered choice, intensity, and um, repetitions, right? The total amount of sets that you do is, is really kind of up to your personal fitness level, right? Um, if you did as little as like three sets per exercise, that's probably enough. Work sets. Totally, yeah, totally work sets, right. So get fully warmed up and build up to that 85%. Don't just walk into the gym and throw 85% on and go, thank you. That's a that's an important distinction. Um, so work your way up, do some, um, like a very classic warm up thing would be like a set of 10 at 50%, a set of eight at 60%, a set of maybe eight again at 70%, and then maybe like a set of five at 75%. So two or three or four sets kind of building intensity and lowering the rep range. And then you would go after your two or three working sets. The primary driver of strength is intensity. It's, it's not the volume, right? It's the intensity. So in order to maintain that, we have to do a low repetition range. But in addition, we also have to have a high rest interval. Because if we start to, if we have any amount of fatigue incur, 
and we have to then either reduce the reps or reduce the intensity, we've lost the primary driver. We've lost that main signal. So the number we're gonna throw out typically is like two to four minutes. Um, so imagine you did, you know, your setup bench press and you did five repetitions at 85%, you probably wanna rest two to four minutes before coming back to the bench. That doesn't mean you have to sit there on your phone. Like, in fact, please don't. <laughs> like, everyone will thank you for not doing that, I promise. Um, you can engage other muscle groups. This is what we call supersetting. So you're doing your bench press and while that two minute clock is running for your chest, to rest, you can go over and do your deadlifts. And so, you know, you, you can kind of move back and forth. And this is how you can make strength training a not seven hour workout. If you're a professional athlete, you're gonna take that time because you wanna maximize the outcome. Training frequency is is crucial, but how often can, can and should one train a muscle? And how do you know if a muscle is recovered locally and how do you know if your nervous system is recovered systemically? Okay, this is a bunch of really interesting questions. I'm not sure exactly what route you want to go, so I'll start here. Um, as I mentioned earlier, soreness is not a good barometer of exercise quality because some types of training are going to induce more soreness and some are going to induce less. That's important to this conversation because when you ask about how do you know if a muscle is ready to train again, one of the questions is, well, what are you training for? If you're training for hypertrophy, right, muscle size, muscle growth, we need to hedge towards recovery because what you're trying to do is cause a massive insult there, allow then protein synthesis to occur, building of new tissue, which takes time, 48 to 72 hours, like kind of at a minimum, that process needs to occur. If you're doing actually more strength, and this is a differentiation between hypertrophy and strength, then you didn't induce actually much damage. In fact, you're generally not going to get very sore from true strength training, very little, unless you get really heavy, you did it a lot. The primary driver of hypertrophy is not the same primary driver of strength. We talked about that already. That's intensity driven. It, for, vol it, for hypertrophy, it's not intensity. So because we have different mechanisms, we have different outcomes, even though they're closely aligned, strength is not gonna cause a lot of soreness. Therefore, intensity is the driver. Therefore, frequency can be as high as you want. So you can train every single day the same exact muscle if speed or power or strength are the primary training training tools because you need stimulus there's skill is skill as well right practice that you know that as much as anybody developing a new motor pattern requires a lot of repetitions right you don't need a tremendous amount of rest that's not it's not a damage thing right it's a repatterning issue so strength training in fact if you look at again true strength professional athletes they're going to train the same muscles basically every day on those tendon that actually move the bone that cause human movement so that's area three. Area one, the nervous system. Area two, the muscle contraction. Area three, some sort of connective tissue thing. Changes happen at all three of those levels. So when you're talking about, again, that strength development, you can see tremendous improvements in total force production by manipulating all of those areas and you have not touched changes in muscle size. If you change muscle size in a true sustained fashion, whether this is sarcoplasmic or contractile proteins, you have given yourself more opportunity to produce more force. It doesn't guarantee you produce more force. Um, bodybuilders are not stronger than powerlifters, even though they have more muscle. But bodybuilders are probably stronger than most people. So there is a relationship between muscle size and strength. It's just not a one-to-one -one guaranteed ratio. And that's generally because the although the muscle has been aided, they may have not changed the biomechanical considerations. They may have not changed the connective tissue nor the nervous system stuff. And so that's why we see this giant relationship that our value is pretty high between strength and hypertrophy. But if you really want to get to the ends of it, it's not. And that matters to your actual question 10 minutes ago, because again, you can train strength daily on the same muscle. But if you want to allow for that process of connect uh, contractile proteins to, to add and grow, then you're going to have to allow some recovery. Because if you go back into that muscle too soon, you're going to blunt the response, you're gonna stop it, you're gonna cut it off. You have all kinds of, of problems going on in the cell that are gonna um, just attenuate that, that growth response. So I gave you the answer for strength training. The answer for hypertrophy is probably less than three out of 10 on level of soreness, you can go again. In general, you're probably looking at 72 hours is the optimal window. 